episode three of the, the uh, Mr. Courgette and, and DBSB Chili, Chili and, and Zombie, Zombie Experience. Experience. We still can't get used to saying all of uh, it, but we'll get there eventually. But we've got featuring guest, guest, guest. It's Dave. Oh, guest, guest. From Beard Evil. Yeah. Yes. yes. Wave Beard to the camera, Dave. Evil. Hello, I'm in Beard Evil. Yes. Yes. We're playing on January 31st at Fitzherbert. Oh, So today we decided it's finally time. Yeah, it's finally time. Finally Having time. purchased this off the lovely Jason of Burning Desire Foods at the uh, Fiery Foods Festival that last year, Ooh, last, last year, year now, yeah. um, it's finally time to try the Carolina Reaper Insane Hot Sauce. But Carolina Reapers being the latest and greatest hot yeah. in the world. Yeah. And. I believe we tried a little bit of this yeah, at the Fiery Foods the Festival. Crunch. There might have been a lot of beer beforehand though, so this will be the first true test, as it were. Indeed. And, um, yeah, I've got a bottle of it. I haven't tried it, because I trust Jason and his yeah. sauce making implicitly. He's one of the finest sauce makers in the country. And this is one of the only sauces at the moment which is guaranteed Carolina Reaper. I believe at the time of making, it was the only one in the yes. UK. It was. Which is congratulations to Jason. Yes, for cornering the market of hotness. Indeed. And also congratulations on his Hot Sauce Company of the Year at yes. the Foods Festival. Big thumbs up for Jason. This is sounding like a bit of an advert for Jason here, yeah. so let's get on and try the sauce. A little of this will go a long way. We do have yogurt on standby. Um, well, it's in the fridge and it's not opened yet, so quite how on standby well, it is, I don't that's, know. That's more of a standby than in the shop. This is true. The fact that you could still oh. smell it through the applicator is quite impressive, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's really opened the I smell up. I you said that to all the girls. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It's, it's, mm. it's really opened the smell up. You oh, can wow. smell it. You can smell it's a bit floral. Yeah, it's... you can smell the vinegar in it. Oh, it's beautiful. It's slightly tomato smell. It doesn't yeah. have tomato in it, does it? Hang on, we'll refer to this. Um, no, no, it's peppers. It is the peppers. It's the peppers yeah, it's the, it's the pulp peppers. Pulp peppers, yeah. Mm. Try saying that when you're pissed. Mm. Right. Right. Well, I believe, boys, bottoms up. bottoms up is the way. Yeah. 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 And that's an immediate burn. <laughs> it's an immediate eyes watering. <laughs> Bit of a choke. A bit of a burn. That is fantastically flavoured as well, though. The flavour's really good. It's Straight really good. Away. And there come the hiccups, DSB. DSB. Very, mm. oh, very tickly on the tongue. Straight away. Yeah, yeah. It's roof of your mouth, all around your tongue. But it's yeah, fiery. Such it's a, fantastic. Such oh. a good flavour. Some some really hot sauces are very bitter, and they just go really hot and aren't great but that's got a really good it takes you on a bit of a flavour journey and there's no bitterness no all. bitterness I mean, you can taste the pepper you can really taste the chilli well you, obviously you can taste the chilli <laughs> but um, the flavour comes to you straight away and yeah but ah, oh, even though it's really hot it's quite comfortable and yeah it's not it, it, you, you know it's hot yeah. you can feel it going down but it's, it, it, it feels a little bit more friendly than, say, mm. some of the scorpions or, or, or stuff like that. Well, so unlike a lot of the American sauces that... No, it's the American sauces that mm. have a, a few more preservatives there to keep them yeah. longer because of all the regulations, that this feels a bit more natural mm. and the taste... It, it, you can actually taste all the chilli without yeah. any overpowering background noise, if you will. Yeah. And yeah, and the, immediately you get the burn, and you get a bit of a choke on, and then from there the flavour just builds in your mouth, mm. and mm, mm, the saliva brings it back around for a second go. Mm, that, that, that is good. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Courgette, what are you planning to do with uh, this uh, this sauce? Well, Mr. DBSB, we are planning tonight, um, having in previous episodes done a five bean chilli and the Maruga mushroom burgers. Oh, yeah. Uh, along with the uh, mystery chilli coleslaw, I believe. Oh, last mystery time chilli coleslaw was very good. This time around, we are going to do a Reaper pasta bake. Ooh, pasta bakey.
with uh with pasta bake. Baked and pastry. Mmm. That's a taste yeah. test. Give it a go. So it had uh, three tablespoons of the uh... Carolina Reaper insane hot sauce. We'll overdub this. No, well, we won't. There's no overdubs in our videos. But, um, <laughs> the ins Carolina Reaper insane hot sauce. Doesn't need a gimmick. Bottoms up. Oh. Mmm. A lot of flavour, but a lot of the heat's dissipated throughout the dish. Yeah. I have a feeling this may well be a surprise pasta bake, and there may be a few mouthfuls where you get a decent bit of heat. Yeah. Well, it's, it's put a nice sort of like little twist, because it was just basically tomato, chopped tomatoes that you put chopped in. Chopped tomatoes, tomato puree, garlic, basil oregano, black pepper. Mmm. Just give it yeah. that sort of like floral fruity flavour, a um, little bit of the tingle on your tongue, mm. but I say because it's quite a big dish, the heat's dissipated through a lot of it, you've got a little bit of a kick in there, and I think, I say, there's a few surprise mouthfuls to come. I think it's sure. a builder, a builder. Yeah. So yes, Jason's sauce, the Carolina Reaper insane hot sauce is brilliant. So. We're eating the chilli part, and uh, we should get on with the zombie part. This is a uh, Mr. Courgette choice. Indeed. Could go one of two ways. Mm -hmm. We've had one good and one bad so far in the series. And this one could be contentious and politically disturbing. Mm. It's called O Zombie, and has the byline of Osama Bin Laden will die again. So there you have it, a zombie. Yeah, a zombie in a nutshell. I think some of the best one-liners I've seen in a zombie film. Yes, good one-liners. Uh, topless gun-toting Colin Farrell look-alike. That that was good. Um, some Kill Bill-esque sword play, which was pretty out of place in what was basically a Middle Eastern it's, American yeah. war faith fair film. I I kind of something that I th I was. Coming into watching this, I was there was a part of me that was thinking I'm going to be watching something which is borderline racist oh, <laughs> and um, uh, made by a bunch of rednecks who want to push the American gun-toting flag. But I was pleasantly surprised how they just didn't uh, yeah. get there. There wasn't anything that was. I'd go, mm, that's overly racist. And that there was, there was a kind of a bit of a thing of, I feel the end. Uh, this is his, his Potential part, spoilers. Potential spoiler, but it's a zombie film. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, the end, the person who kills the, uh, who kills the zombie Osama mm. isn't the military. And I, I, I wonder if that, the uh, the writer or the director's sort of little mid message is it's it's not the military who's going to get rid of these issues. It's going to be the people. Wow, you're getting existential on us here. Oh uh, yeah, well you know, that's one of the things I like about zombie films. You know, the yeah. good, the, the the Romero ones are brilliant. You know, they're about consumer culture. Uh, Land of the Dead. Have you seen Land of the not Dead? Yet, the last no. one. Land of the Dead is all about um, the Iraq War, and well, not necessarily the Iraq War, but it's all about it's a modern warfare, almost. Yeah, well, it's about the West and the, and the, the war of like that the West runs into third world countries, steals stuff, and the people in third world countries get fed up of it and want to take back what was theirs. Hmm. And it's yeah, it's it's and then yeah. So that's one of the things I like about zombie films in that you can do some very ham-fisted political stuff. And there I was, I really, I really, coming into this, I was thinking it's going to be, you know, like going, you know, the zombie film version of Roy Chubby Brown. <laughs> <laughs> but thankfully, I mean, although it was mainly percent from the military perspective, yeah. there wasn't really a political undercurrent in there. It was very much sort of 
Weird. Military versus zombies, but Osama is the bad guy. And that was it. Yeah. You know, it's it was just like, he's the ringleader. There was no sort of, oh, he's a bad man for this or that or the other. It was and, just... And then know. they also had the thing of the... Uh, the insurgents had found the zombie, Osama. Yes. And he was in chains. So, you know, there's also another part of it that, that the idea of Osama bin Laden is... Mm is more of a bigger thing than actually Osama Bin Laden was. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <Interesting>. <laughs> that might well, be what we say, two and a half, three out of five, I don't know, what do we give it? Well, well, it's you... a tough one. I say, I love the one-liners, some good explosions. What deteriorated it a little bit for me were there were a few sort of nearly moments where there, there could have been some really good kills that were just... You were left without the, the final blow, if you know what I mean. Yeah. You know, whether that was just because the CGI budget wasn't up to actually following through on some of the, what could have been bigger deliveries, I don't know, but you always felt a bit cheated at times. Yeah, there were a couple of punchlines that they missed. Yeah, you missed Definitely. the payoff a few yeah. times there. But, you know, I mean, we paid three pounds for it. It was worth three quid. Yeah, and I think it was, it was better than Night of the Dead. Oh yes, very much better than Night of the Dead. If we're going to rank these at the end of the series, yeah, you know, it's below Juan of the Dead. Yeah, you know, but, above but above Night, Night of, the, of dead. the Dead. I don't think there are going to be many below Night of the Dead. I stand to be corrected. Yeah, there were there were some of the, the production values on this one which were kind of on a par with Night of the Dead. Yeah. Um, but I think they kind of saved it with kind of having a bit more. Humour without making it into a slapstick Shaun of the Dead humour. Yeah. It was it still had its kind of gritty moments, but it mm. wasn't too uh, a bit touchy feely at times. Yeah, there were, but then there, I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure they were taking the piss out of the kind of uh, action film thing where there'll be action happening all around and someone will be going, but but I love you, kind of yeah. thing. So I think they were kind of. They were playing on, on quite a few areas of it. Yeah. It's, yeah, not not too bad a film. Don't go into it thinking it's going to be a fantastic piece of cinema. And don't go into it thinking it's going to be a big think piece. No, no. Just go into it thinking guns, zombies, blood, camouflage and big beards. Yeah. 